Hello and welcome to the Scatterable channel. And today I'm going to be ranking the best processors you can find for under $200 brand new in early 2023 through the means of a tier list. Now, once again, for a sign of neutrality, I've made the background green because there are no CPUs from Nvidia, but we will be discussing many Intel and AMD processors in this video. And with that said, I will be linking every single processor I talk about in this video in the description below if any of them interests you. But do know you probably want to stick it to the good ones and avoid the bad ones. And that is the whole purpose of this video. So we're gonna get right into it. But first, I want to give a quick word to our sponsor. If you're looking for an SFX power supply that can do it all, then look no farther than Cooler Master's new V1100 SFX Platinum Power Supply. As the name suggests, in a very small package, you can get 1,100 watts worth of power with an A plus platinum certification. And you, this thing can quite literally run any graphics card you throw at it while being very small. And if that wasn't cool enough, you yourself actually can be eligible to win this exact power supply through a giveaway on Cooler Master's website. So go ahead and put your information and fill out anything you want for the giveaway on their website, or you can actually post a build if you already get this power supply with the hashtags and SFX Revolution and VSFX Platinum for the chance to win a $100 Steam code. So if you wanna learn more about this epic SFX power supply or for a chance to win this, or a $100 Steam code, then be sure to check the links at the top of the description. So let's start with our cheapest CPU option and work our way up to the most expensive. Starting from AMD, we have the Ryzen 4500, which you can get for 80 bucks. And I know that sounds tempting, but don't do it. Don't do it. It is Garbo tier. The 4500 is a 4000 series processor. It's on a slightly older architecture. It doesn't even support PCI Gen 4.0, which is definitely a downer if you wanted to pair with it, say like an ARC A380, RX 6400, or RX 6500 XT, because that'll really hamper the performance of those lower end graphics cards with that PCI Gen 3.0 limited CPU. And yes, it's six cores and 12 threads, but come on guys. If you're getting a CPU for gaming, what really matters is single threaded performance. And the 4500, despite those six cores and 12 threads, doesn't have it as you'll see compared to the rest of the processors we'll be talking about in this video. Go ahead and pass it. I know it's 80 bucks, but pass it. However, though, moving up to $100, we have the 4600G. Now this is an APU. And you know what, let's make, uh, let's do this a little bit justice actually. Okay, now in all fairness, APUs have their value in the fact that if you can't get a dedicated graphics card, they are a very cheap and effective solution at getting you a gaming experience through the means of those integrated Vega graphics. So in terms of a gaming CPU, they're really bad. But in terms of an all-in-one processor with integrated graphics, they're really good for the money. So I'm putting them in their own special tier, albeit below C tier, and we're gonna put the 4600G at 100 bucks right there in the APU tier, which then leads us to the first actual 5000 series processor from AMD, clocking in at about 100 bucks, the Ryzen 5 5500. Now, the deal is this is on an updated architecture. It's on the 5000 series architecture, but it has the same pitfall in the 4500 and the fact that this only comes in a PCI Gen 3.0 flavor. And if you look at the other processor that costs about the same as it, it actually beats it in terms of performance despite having fewer cores and fewer threads. So the 5500, C tier. And what was that other processor you may be asking that had lower cores, lower threads, but still beat it in terms of gaming performance for the same price? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is none other than the Intel Core i3-12100 or the 12100F. You can find this for a hundred bucks right now, just a little bit more than the 5500. And yes, it is a four core, eight threaded CPU, and it beats the 5500 being a six core, 12 threaded CPU. Again, like I said at the start of the video, for gaming, it all comes down to single threaded performance and those Alder Lake chips, even at four cores, can be deadly. And because of that, it is getting our first S tier of the video. That is right, the background is green. I rank CPUs based off of their value and performance, and the i3-12100 definitely deserves its spot in S tier. But now let's talk about its bigger brother, the i3-13100 or the 13100F. So this is on the updated architecture. It is about $120 right now online, and it's actually 
an okay amount faster than the i3-12100. Now, unlike the other 13th gen CPU we're gonna talk about in this video, there's actually a bit of a performance difference between the 12100 and the 13100F and only being had for an extra $20, I think ranks it pretty favorably. For the moment, I'm gonna put it in B tier because it could be a little bit better in terms of performance, but it's not bad by any means. Which then leads us to our next APU costing at about $138, the Ryzen 5 5600G. This is a big favorite of mine if you wanna build a super cheap gaming PC with a decent CPU and good integrated graphics. But once again, it only supports PCI Gen 3.0, which is a little bit of a downer, but it is better than the 4600G. So I'm gonna put it again in the APU tier. It's a bad gaming CPU for the money, but it's a really good APU for the money. So once again, it's getting that coveted APU price category. But now we move on to the big deal, the big kahuna. Had the CPU released when it should have, when AMD wasn't greedy and wasn't controlling the market, it would have made headwaves. And there's actually probably a good reason why AMD didn't release this CPU earlier. Because it almost makes the other CPUs that come after it irrelevant in terms of gaming. It's actually a common story. We've seen this in the 3100 and the 3300X. If you don't know what those CPUs are, that's because they did so well, AMD immediately took them off the shelves because they outdid the six core variants. And I'm seeing a similar phenomenon on the Ryzen 5 5600. This can be had for $140. And guess what? It's really flipping fast. It's basically a 5600X without the X. So in terms of a gaming CPU alone, it's easily S tier. And I'm gonna put it there. But I just wanna let you note that if you are planning to build a brand new system in 2023, I recommend at least looking at what Intel and the new Ryzen 7000 series has to offer because you are gonna be buying into an older generation that only supports DDR4 RAM. So the next time you upgrade your CPU and motherboard and RAM, you're gonna to have to do that all at once versus say that just the RAM or even the CPU. But still, give credit where it's due. The 5600 is probably the best gaming CPU under $200 just looking at the chip. So then going up to the 5600X, again, it's a 5600 with an X on it, but it costs about 20 bucks more. And because of that, I'm gonna put it here in B tier. But just a little bit more expensive than that is Intel's next CPU on this list, which is the i5-12400. This comes in a six core, 12 threaded flavor. It costs about $160 brand new, and it's not that bad. It certainly has its place in the sub $200 CPU market, but it was a really good value until the Ryzen 5 5600 came along, and then it started going down in price. So this would be an A tier CPU, but right now it's looking a bit more like a B tier. Although I'm gonna put it ahead of the 13100F because the 12400 is faster than it and you, do, and you do get more cores and more threats. But then we go on to another CPU that doesn't make sense. It shouldn't be under $200 right now, but it is the Ryzen 7 5700X. This is the only eight core 16 threaded CPU on this list. And if you're somebody who knows you're gonna need a lot of cores and threads for whatever CPU intensive applications you're gonna be loading up on your computer, then the 5700X makes a lot of sense. But if you're a gamer, you might as well stick it to the 5600. I'm being serious. Save yourself the money and use that extra $50 or so on a faster graphics card, more storage, better case, whatever. So because of that, I'm gonna put the 5700X I'm gonna put it at the top of B tier. At the end of the day, it's an eight core 16 threaded CPU. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Which leaves us with our final CPU choice, which in terms of MSRP should be below $200, but right now it's selling for about 210. We have the i5-13400F. Now I was really hoping this CPU would be a lot faster than the 12400, but unfortunately that doesn't really look like to be the case. It's like a 12600K, but worse. So it kind of, uh, and actually, you know what? People are saying that the i5-13500 for only about 40 bucks more is actually worth getting that over this. So in terms of value, it's, uh, in terms of performance, it's okay. I mean, it's still really fast. It's faster than the 12400 and it's faster than the 5600, I believe, but it is 210 bucks right now. If it goes down in price, then I think it'll be more competitive. 
However, do note that the 13400F is not a six core CPU. It's technically a 10 core CPU. You are getting more cores and more threads, which would be useful if you need it for more CPU based intensive applications. But for gaming, it's not that strong of a value right now, which is why I'm gonna put it ahead of the 5500 in C tier. And unfortunately, we don't have any good CPUs in A tier. If the 13100F went down a little bit more in price, I'd probably put it on A tier because the motherboards for it are still a little bit more expensive. And you know what, if the 5700X did go down in price or even the 12400, those would be eligible for A tier. But I'm telling you that 5600 at 140 bucks is really hard to beat. And the 12100 setting the standard for a four core CPU at 100 bucks, being not too far off the 13100F being cheaper, again, too hard to beat. So there you have it. That is my tier list for the best CPUs under $200 brand new. And once again, all of these will be linked in the description if you wanna check out any of them. But of course, only to check out the good ones. But I'll do you an extra. I'll also link some motherboards in the description as well that are compatible with these CPUs. So with all of that said, thank you so much for watching. And this is the Scatterville Channel, signing out.